Yeah, right. Yep. Hey, you guys, welcome back. I'm excited for this conversation. We've been following this journey of a dear friend of Park City Television for some time now, and she's been working on this dream for a lot longer. This past weekend, she spent some time in Omaha, Nebraska, fighting Golden Gloves Championship. And this time around, we had some challenging results. That being said, I'm not changing my prediction, you friends. Mary Gwen Valingo will return one day soon to Park City, Utah with a gold medal from the Olympics in women's boxing. Woo! <laughs> yeah, love that. How are you, homie? Good. It's great so to good. see you. Yeah, good Thanks to see for you coming. Too. Thank you. So let's get the, the semi challenging part of the conversation out of the way, although okay. I have to say in, in following you this weekend that I thought you looked great. I thought you won your championship bout. Split decision is always a, an indicator of how close it was. Close, yeah. And we were talking about your, your trophy and how you were uh, maybe not, maybe working that smile a little bit for little your bit. second <laughs> place bit. finish. There it yeah. is. Yes, that is the yes, I'll sort of smile for your photograph. Photograph. Exactly. But yeah. forced to say the least. But I, I yeah. feel like even in the, just the chat we've had since you got here to the studio this morning, I'm, I'm sensing your, your resolve and that you're taking a lot of positive and of course you made a great post on Facebook on social media about your takeaway talk yeah. about all of that um, you know I had a frustrating loss I won two fights going into it lost that split decision and uh, all in all I feel like had I won I probably wouldn't have made the adjustments that I needed to make um, I need to make some changes that that split decision definitely indicated for me and I think that the best thing I can do is read that loss with what the growth pattern is I need to do to make sure that that doesn't happen again. Now yeah. is this an opponent that you had faced before? No, but she's on the USA team at 106. I've seen her fight before. I knew I knew what I was going into. What she, her characteristics yeah, are. Yeah. That kind yeah. of thing. And, yeah. and is that something that when you're in, obviously being in the middle of a fight is a really crazy place in time in your life, I'm sure. I've never been inside the ring, but were, were there things that were happening during the fight that you were kind of realizing in your analytical side of your mind? Yeah, I knew one of the things I've been working on is when I step back, I stand a little bit too tall. I knew I was doing that in the fight, but I wasn't making the adjustment as quickly as I needed to. Um, I should have backed her up a little bit more than I did. I like to counter and it was working for me, but I was getting tagged on the way back. So right, right. I was aware of that, but I wasn't able to make the adjustment as quickly as I needed to. And that's that goes back to that's the adjustment that needs to happen in my training that wasn't happening. And so now I know that I need to do that. It's something I can't make on my own. I need my coach there making it happen. So putting a plan into place to make it happen. And but. it occurs to me that, that you've got these two big buckets. When you say training, that's, a, that's an all-inclusive term that includes physical fitness, which in some ways, and, and of course everybody's more specialized than ever with what your physical training program is. That being said, to a certain extent, that's the easy part. For because me, yeah. Because if, yeah. if you get your good training plan, then it's like, okay, all I have to do is at 5 a.m. do these yeah. series of, of exercises, strength training, cardio, all those things. Yep. When it comes to strategy, that's where it where it happens. And as you're talking about your your sort of your own post fight analysis. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah, I mean, showing up, putting in the work, that's, I think, that's like the dedication, the drive, and the desire. And if you have that, I mean, I can't tell you how many times late at night I'm like, shoot, I still have to do my sprints. And, but I can do that. I can go out on my own and I can make that happen. But watching myself make those small adjustments, I need somebody there with me. So that's, yeah, that's definitely the harder side. That's like, getting the work done is not the issue necessarily. Right. It's making sure that the, it's the right work. Absolutely, and and as you were saying, things like um, you know, we talk about behavior modification with mm -hmm. it's men, mental health month, and, and and people making changes to their lives because of, of uh, substance abuse, and, and and there's a habit that that you've got to change in your life, and even stepping yeah. back but staying tall. It's like that's a habit that that has to be retrained because yeah. in that moment, if oh, it's not yeah. ingrained, it's costing you points. Yeah, definitely, and. Like I've drilled those bad habits really, really well. So that's, I mean, it's, it's a big change to make. Yeah, sure. when you've been practicing wrong 
when you've been having any behavior that's not feeding you well, it's not like, you know, it's three weeks to make a healthy habit. But if you've got years and years of bad habits, it's hard. Yeah, it's so, not a three week change. It's a it's a long term process. So how does that fit into and, and we use the the, the, the step back uh, example, but talk a little bit about other things like that and kind of what your I guess your arc of change is maybe from, like you say, it's not three weeks, so here we are in, in May of 2018. Do you have goals set as far as like changes made yeah. by August, by I do, October Yeah, I do. Kind so for me, my next big tournament is USA Nationals. I qualified for that back in March. Right. Um, and that's December, so that's really where my long-term focus is. Um, I have tournaments in October, um, I'll probably move up a weight class and go to a different tournament and see to just get the experience. I can't mm -hmm. go at the same weight class because I've already qualified, but I'll go right. somewhere, I'll go to Portland in August and then to Tennessee in October. And my plan is by August to make that adjustment that I'm staying low, by October to be working angles a little bit more and make sure that in December you don't see any of those behaviors. So I have kind of a staged plan for strength and conditioning to help me stay low, but then really working it in the gym. Um, and we'll just kind of take it one tournament at a time, watch a lot of video, and yeah. I'm, right now I'm gonna record basically every single round and analyze each right. round and make sure that I'm like not ever, I think part of the problem is, you know, after practice if you analyze, you maybe already did an hour and a half or two hours of the wrong movement. So right. like slowing down and saying, okay, was that three minutes perfect? Was that three minutes perfect? And taking it like literally round by round. So. I I have yeah. to imagine, though, that there is, a, once you get past the inevitable disappointment, everybody wants the W, but by the same token, I, I, I feel like I know you well enough to know that you like a challenge and that this, this process that you're about to go through has probably got you excited in its own way. Yeah, I think um, I'm excited to see what I'm capable of. Yeah. I feel like I know, but when I fall just short, it's like, okay, well, let's see if, can I make myself look like a different fighter and right. how quickly can that happen? Like, yeah, December is the goal, but you know, right. I mentioned in that post, my goal was to win every tournament I went to this year. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I still, I still am planning on doing that. So that means in August, I expect to win, in October, I expect to win. And I don't want to win still with the bad habits. That's right. not a win in the long-term goal. Right. So, right, right, that's yeah. actually keeping you from being that that boxer that you need to be in December yeah. at nationals, yeah, which of course exactly. is the most important tournament. Right. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah, so it's exciting. That yeah. is really cool. Is. I'm, yeah. I'm excited for you, I really am. Of course, uh, like I say, I, I watched the, the match and, and was uh, disappointed at the decision, but um, that being said, right, we all have challenges in our lives yeah. and, and, and I think you, in your post, talked about your takeaway of I, I, I see what I need to learn from this experience mm -hmm. and in that way, and of course we talk all the time about uh, failure being a great, the greatest teacher, uh, and yes. even though <laughs> yes, you won two is. bouts, yeah. and even though it was yeah. a split decision, and right one point or two, I don't know, I didn't, I didn't see it's what two, the... two, three, yeah. yeah. So it was yeah, very it was close. close. Could have been, yeah. it, it could have gone for a W for you, and yeah. maybe you didn't have this work plan to say, wow, I got it, I, I've got, specific strategic mm -hmm. technical things that I've got to get better at and yeah. if I pair that then with the conditioning right good yep. stuff nationals in December yes it's coming that's awesome yeah so let's take a quick break and talk about rise boxing okay Mary Gwen Valinga she has just opened up a boxing gym here in Park City and we're going to talk all about that after the break please stay tuned Welcome back. We're talking boxing, we're talking fitness, we're talking Olympics with our friend and Parkite Mary Gwen Villinga. Or should I say Villinga? <laughs> Maybe you should. I, I don't know who it was of your family that was taking the Facebook Live video, but when, yeah. the, when the ring announcer said Villinga, yeah. <laughs> everybody started laughing. It's, yeah, I gotta, you're my teammate, yeah. And she's her name is Whitney Gomez and she's like the whitest girl ever so we always oh. laugh because <laughs> right. it's like, yeah. How ironic, yeah. right? But, oh, that's yeah. great. So switching gears but staying in the realm of the sweet science, you've yeah. opened up a gym here in Park City. Tell us all about it. 
Uh, yeah, so I just opened Rise Boxing. It's a fitness boxing studio with a kids teen and a competitive program. So trying to cover all the bases of boxing and get as many people interested as I possibly can. Yeah. It's kind of a cool thing about boxing in the modern era that in some ways, and of course boxing has faced challenges as a spectator sport from MMA yeah. and sort of not having that Mike Tyson or that galvanizing one person the way that uh, maybe Conor McGregor kind of is in MMA. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. But that being said, there's this whole, and, and of course part of your story goes all the way back to uh, boxing classes. Mm -hmm. And yep. talk a little bit about that and your inspiration, not only the inspiration to become a competitive boxer, but also to open up your own gym. Yeah, so I got into boxing. I went to a fitness boxing class and then happened to go to the Golden Gloves Nationals, which was in Salt Lake, and the two married, and I was like, I gotta try the sport. And um, awesome. But if I hadn't gone to a fitness boxing class, I probably wouldn't have ever competed. Um, Isn't I, that crazy? It is crazy, yeah, it is. To I think mean, that you could have, just, just one little event yeah. could have changed what now is the dominant storyline of your life at least for this period yeah yeah That's absolutely cool. and now you can yeah. do it for other people right yeah and I think I know most of the people especially the women I know who box got into boxing through fitness boxing um, I think it's a great workout I think it's a blast it's tons of fun so whether people want to compete or not I don't really care but I do know that people will box for fitness and then slowly fall in love with it and come over to the competition side and ultimately that's what I want to see happen um, but I'm also happy just to get people interested in the sport so, sure yeah sure. share what I love and, and have a, a thriving business in a yeah. place where there w this option hasn't yeah. been uh, here's a philosophical question for you okay. because I, I think a lot I mean I've always as we discussed during the commercial break I've always loved boxing I've always mm -hmm. been a fan of it and there have been you know when I was a little kid Ali or Mike Tyson and and some of these amazing historical figures that that bring everybody's attention together yeah. on on this amazing amazing sport but at, at the at the base of it it is the most human I mean we're talking about attacking defending yourself we're talking about yeah. conflict we're yeah. talking about 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 the basis of war right right I mean yeah. until you pick up a stick or pick up a gun all you have is your fist to either defend yourself or to mm -hmm. redress a grievance as the yeah. old saying goes where are you on on that sort of after this amount of experience that you've had in the ring where you know you can go to a thousand million boxing classes mm -hmm. but until you get in the ring it, 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 you haven't done right I right. mean I've never yeah, been no, in the you, ring and I go yeah. hey, anybody who's done that step between the ropes right that yeah that I mean it changes movie. it changes everything I think I don't know I I think a lot about this especially coaching kids now and I know some of them probably have no desire to get hit a right. lot of them are really hesitant to hit other kids and you know the parents I'm like hmm, are they okay with that right. you know like sure. where do you draw the line how do you talk about it like it is a fighting sport the goal right. is to hit somebody else more than you get hit right. and you know I don't at all promote violence I would never pick a fight on the street right. I'm like it is sport completely to me but at the end of the day when people agree to compete and you step through that rope and you're in right. the ring like there's an agreement like this right. is what we're here for there's no more and, talking yeah there's and, no more philosophizing no, and, it, and there's no more sorry I mean it's it is like you're trying to hit somebody and you're trying to hit them hard and you're you know it is sport and I think that that's kind of th that that agreement is within any sport, within football, within anything. And you kind of have that respect of your opponent. Mm -hmm. We walk out of the ring as friends. M most of my best friends are girls from across the nation who yeah. are fellow fighters. Sure. And, um, but I think it's important to make sure that you teach it as sport. Um, I'm really cautious about not talking about it like self-defense. I don't look at what I do at Rise Boxing as self-defense. Um, I look at it as fitness and then sport. And an important distinction because the the expectations that you set, um, I know I'm telling you what you've already no, but, yeah. <laughs> philosophically thought through, but it's like that 
telling people that thing of like we're teaching self-defense classes or whatever, which again from a business standpoint, I mean, at a boxing gym, no one would fault you. No, no, and there are some people who have that approach. That's, but that's not mine. I mean, I'm a 112 pound girl. I know that, you know, a hundred and. 75 pound guy no matter what boxing skill I have can still pick me up and carry me away and to defend myself I probably need more than boxing and that's well just said. that's not my I don't I don't know that's not my interest I guess teaching self-defense sure uh, my interest is more in teaching confidence and ability and skill and and that side of things sure so. and and I think the fact of the matter that we can all agree on is that I don't know I've, I've been pretty successful at going through a fairly lengthy life at this point and I haven't had to get in a street fight. Right. I mean, you know, yeah, like yeah. scraps you can in high it. school, yeah. of course, yeah. Use whatever, your brain but, more but, than your body. Right, to right, defend absolutely. It. Like, and it's like, well, don't go to that place right. in the world where there's uh, right. sketchy people or whatever sure. and yeah. you're likely If you can to, avoid it, avoid it. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. So uh, we should do the specifics of Rise Boxing so people can follow okay. along. You got your uh, you got your gram going and I do, everybody's got to do, do yeah. it. So tell us all the important information. Uh, okay, so we are located out uh, by Jeremy Ranch, Rasmussen Road by Park City Brewery and Burt Brothers. Um, we're open from earliest classes, 5.30 a.m. We have classes all the way through 7 p.m. We have fitness boxing morning and midday for the most part, a couple evening classes. We have a kids class, a teen class, and then a competitive boxing program. Uh, we provide everything you need. We have wraps, gloves, we've got awesome swag, we got it all. That's cool. so, yeah. Look at that smile, yeah, you're having fun. a good time. It's, uh. Yeah, it's, you know, I didn't b coach for about maybe eight months after Alpen Fit closed and then getting Rice going. And um, being back coaching, like it's, I love it. I had a guy yesterday who I like, kept his daughter late and he made the comment, he said, look, you love what you're doing now. Nobody's gonna ever get to leave. And I, but it's true, like yeah, I get caught up in the moment and I love it, yeah, it's a blast. Well, and it, it occurs me. to me that it's such a, a, a beautiful gift that you have to be able to uh, be a model, a role model for people by pursuing Olympic glory, it sounds kind yeah. of corny, but it's really true. And and simply the fact that you're putting yourself out there, that you are stepping into the ring with an opponent is incredibly inspiring, whether Thank someone you. is is boxing Thanks. or not. And as you say, I really, I, I love your emphasis on building confidence, building self-acceptance. Yeah. And, and you can do that for the rest of your life. Yeah, definitely, yeah. It's hard putting, like your fail failures out there in the public eye and pursuing sure. something that isn't just a linear road to success. Right. Um, but it's been awesome to have the feedback from the community. I mean, yeah. people people are supportive of me both win or lose. And I think that it's been great for me to get to share that with everybody mm -hmm. and also see people kind of have these life analogies. And I get that all the time. Well, I did this so or that. Great. And it's like, whoa, this is what it's about. Yeah. Well, awesome. it's, it, it's something that I, I say to friends and, and people that I've been fortunate to meet here on Park City Television. Uh, thanks for the inspiration. And oh, thank you. You don't know uh, when you're inspiring people. When you're asleep, you're inspiring yeah. people because people can go to your Instagram and see that you're challenging yourself and stepping yeah. over your challenges and continuing forward. And, and to get to have a physical space in Rise Boxing is really cool. And I, I, it feels you. to me like it's a super important thing for our community. Awesome, thank you so much. Big yeah, up, Mary Gwen everybody. Yay. So good to see you. Uh, finally, let's do uh, social media and yes. online presence so if you, people can follow along with you and go become a member of the gym. Sure, yeah, so Rise Boxing, we have our website, riseboxing.com. Facebook is Rise Boxing, uh, Rise underscore boxing on Instagram. Search us, you'll find us. And me personally, I'm Mary Gwen Valinga on both Facebook and Instagram. Thanks so much. Veinga. Veinga. <laughs> with the new nickname. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> so it. great to see you. Congratulations. Thanks. And continued success. Come visit again soon. Hopefully. I'll Thank see you, you at so the much. gym. Appreciate it. Yeah. All right, you guys. Rise Boxing. Check them out right across the internet and social media. Follow Mary Gwen Valinga because we have such an amazing quotient of world-class athletes here in Park City. Of course, most of them are in Alpine Sports, but we've got one right here with us who has got a bright future. So cool. We're going to take a break and close out the show quickly after this.